Hello and welcome back to the Dundee YouTube channel where ordinarily we review some of the new cars coming to the Irish market. Things like this stunning Kia EV6. In today's review, we're actually gonna be talking about everything you need to know about electric cars from buying one, what grants are available to you, what it's like to own, and then of course, what it's actually like to drive an electric car. So it's essentially electric cars 101. And this is really important because in today's world, we're really seeing a lot more electric cars. So far this year in 2022, we've already seen about 10,000 new electric cars come on to Irish roads. So it's really becoming a viable option for many of us. So today, we're gonna to be talking everything you need to know about it from A to Z. So first and foremost, when you go to buy an electric car, there's actually a number of grants that are available to you. And these are all from the Irish government to say thank you for protecting the environment and buying an EV. Now, it's worth noting that these change from time to time, and so they are 100% correct at the time of filming, but they could have changed if there's been a new budget since we filmed this. So the first one is the SEAI grant, and that is up to 5,000 euros, but it is very important that the car has to be valued at under 60,000 euros. And if you buy a car at 60,001 euros, you don't get any of the grant. So it's really important to try and stay under that 60,000 euro threshold when you're specking your extras. The second grant that's available to you is up to 600 euros for the home charger grant. And what this means is you can get a home charger installed at home. Now the price for these vary between one and 2,000 euros roughly, but the good news is that grant combined with some manufacturers have actually teamed up with companies that when you buy your new electric car, you actually might get that installed free. So it's something to look out for when you're buying an electric car. There's a few other financial perks to buying an electric car. One of them is that there is a VRT rebate of up to 5,000 euros on electric cars valued at under 50,000 euros. The second is that if it's a company car, you don't actually pay any BIK, which is benefit in kind, on an electric car if it's valued at under 50,000 euros. And what's more is, if you have a car that's worth 55,000 euros, then you're only paying that BIK on the additional 5,000 euros. Things are looking up for the electric car buyer and actually they get even better than that. So no matter what electric car you buy, whether it's a fast sports car or an SUV, the tax is always 120 euros, which is great. And what's more is you also get cheaper tolls. Now, when it comes to charging electric cars, there is a huge amount of uncertainty. Where can I charge it? How much does it cost? And of course, how fast can I charge the car? So in the next section, I'm gonna try and explain it as clearly and concisely as possible. So there's essentially three ways to charge your car. And the first is using what's called a granny cable. Now this is just an ordinary three pin socket. You plug it into your wall at home. And then this section plugs in here. That is the most basic way to do it. And at that, it will charge at three kilowatts. Now, if you get the home charger installed using your grant that we previously spoke about, you'll actually be able to charge using a type two charger and that will charge at seven kilowatts, which is more than double the speed of the three pin socket. Then you can go out and you can use the DC charger and that will charge at a rate of up to 100 or 150 kilowatts. Completely depends on the car, but you can use the public infrastructure to get a much faster charge. Generally, as a rule of thumb, most EVs will go from 10 to 90% in about 30 minutes. So how much does it cost to charge an electric car? Well, there's a couple of variables. The first is obviously how big the battery is. The bigger the battery, the more it's gonna cost. And the second is how much you're paying per kilowatt hour of electricity. Now, at the time of filming this, the national average for price of electricity in a home is about 23 cents per kilowatt hour. Now, you can be really clever about this because number one, you can shop around, but the second thing you can do is you can sign up to the night rate. Now, most electric cars like this Kia will actually allow you to schedule your charging. So you can only charge at nighttime, which means with a car like this, you can charge it at nighttime at a lower rate, let's say at 11 cents, 
and then you multiply that out by the size of the battery, 77 kilowatts, and it's costing you about seven or eight euros to get a full charge. So that's how you can be really efficient with charging it. However, there is a few other options if you don't have availability for a home charger that we can avail of too. Number one on that list is the ESB. Now these are the most common chargers around Ireland and they charge at three different speeds, 22 kilowatts, 50 kilowatts, and 150 kilowatts. Now, the price of this, it's always changing. ESB have actually just announced that from May 2022, the prices are gonna go up. But there's also the fact that you can join and pay a monthly membership fee of 4 euro 99 and get cheaper rates. Basically, you're paying for this somewhere between 35 and 47 cents per kilowatt hour, depending on what arrangement you have with the SB. Now, there's also a network of fast chargers. In Ireland, the most popular is the Ionity. Now, to be truthfully honest, these are very, very expensive. You're talking 73 cents per kilowatt hour, so almost seven times the price you're paying for a home charge on the night rate. That said, they're very handy, they're very fast, and they're really, really reliable. Running costs and servicing costs are often a big unknown when it comes to electric cars, but the good news is it's actually a lot less than your average combustion engine car. So to begin with, there's no engine, there's no spark plugs, there's no oil. So that's one less thing to worry about. And what's more is you actually don't use as much brake pads because there's a thing called regenerative braking, which we'll talk about in a moment. So overall, it is a little bit cheaper to run. And on top of that, most electric cars come with a really extensive warranty. This Kia EV6, for example, has seven years or 150,000 kilometers. The only thing to bear in mind is you may use a little bit more tires because they tend to be a little bit more heavy, but that's about it. The beauty of driving an electric car is that they've made it really, really easy. So if you've ever driven an ordinary automatic car, the good news is it's more or less identical. Couple different changes is number one, wait till you feel the acceleration. It's always so instant and that's because an electric motor is like a light switch and it can just be turned on and off immediately. Now, the second biggest difference is that most electric cars, if not all electric cars, come with a thing called regenerative braking, which essentially uses the energy of slowing down to recoup power and then essentially improve your range. It becomes very normal once you've driven an electric car for a while. The first time you get in it, it is weird because you basically take your foot off the accelerator and it begins to slow down. And actually, in many electric cars like this Kia EV6 or even a Volvo XC40 Recharge, it becomes one pedal driving. You don't even really use the brake, which is a bizarre feeling at first, but you do get used to it. Another thing about electric cars is, generally speaking, they're a lot heavier than ordinary combustion engine cars. And this is because some of them have two electric motors, batteries are very heavy. But with modern engineering, it becomes very easy to drive. The steering's very light, and you actually don't notice that you're in quite a large and heavy car. And lastly, a lot of electric cars come with some brilliant, and brilliant technology. So for example, nearly every electric car has got lane assist, it's got adaptive cruise control, emergency braking, blind spot mirroring, and that's because most electric cars are a little bit of a tech fest. A big phrase that gets thrown around with electric cars is range anxiety. And personally, I'm not a big fan of it because in 2022, you don't really have to worry about it. Most EVs are capable of traveling over 400 kilometers on a single charge, and you probably don't need more than that in the real world. However, there are a couple things that affect the range, and I'm gonna talk about those quickly. And the first is actually your heating. So if you blast the heating on a cold day or the AC on a hot day, it's gonna actually remove some of your range. In fact, a top tip is to use your heated seat, and you'll see that nearly every electric car comes with heated seats for exactly that reason. The second thing that will affect your range massively, and this goes for any car, is actually your driving style. So if I drive everywhere, my foot down and then on the brakes, I'm gonna use more energy than if I just drive smoothly for the most part. 
Number three is actually where you drive it. I did a really interesting test with this in the MG ZS. I lived with it for a week and I documented the difference between driving around town versus on the motorway. And unlike a diesel or a petrol car, which operate really efficiently on the motorway, an electric car is the opposite. So if you're driving it around town, that's where you're gonna be most efficient. And if you're at 120 kilometers per hour on the motorway, they're actually less efficient. It's really unusual. And a good one to talk about is actually measuring the efficiency. So in a petrol or diesel, you'll often hear about miles per gallon or liters per 100 kilometers. So basically, down here you can see I'm currently averaging about 20 kilowatt hours per 100 kilometers. Now what that means is I'm using 20 kilowatts for every, or kilowatt hours for every 100 kilometers I'm traveling. So that's actually quite a good number and ideally the number is lower, it's more efficient. If the number is higher, it's less efficient. And the last major factor that will affect your range is the ambient temperature outside. It's well known that on a really cold day, batteries don't do as well, whether it's on your phone or in your old CD player back in the day, and it's the same with cars. So if it's cold outside, your range will decrease. And you'll actually notice a good difference between an EV's range in the winter versus the summer. A couple quick other things that I just wanna run through before we wrap up the video. And one of them is battery deterioration. Now, very often you'll hear people go, oh yeah, it's great now, but in 10 years, the battery won't work. Now, that's somewhat of a myth, to be truthfully honest. I actually did some research yesterday and I saw that a Tesla, over 240,000 kilometers, the battery only lost about 10% of its life. So, pretty impressive, to be fair. There's a couple of things you can actually do to protect your battery. One is, Avoid using fast chargers where possible as they tend to take a bigger toll on the battery. And a second one is actually to not let your battery go below 10% or above 90%. That will help substantially too. So that leads us towards the end of the video. And I guess a big question is, is it worth buying an electric car? Well, that's up to you, that's up to your lifestyle, and of course, where you live and how far you drive. And what I mean by that is, if you live in an apartment, it's a little bit more difficult to get a home charger, and my advice is, if you don't have a home charger, it's probably not worth buying an electric car. The other thing is that right now, at the time of filming this, Electric cars are somewhat of a luxury good. They're not necessarily too affordable for the everyday driver. There is a little bit of a premium to buy one. For example, a normal Mercedes GLB is about 10 or 15,000 euros cheaper than the equivalent EQB. So that's just an example. So it's up to you, but I hope that this video has helped you learn how it works, how much it actually costs to charge, and everything you need to know about owning it. Now, some of these numbers may change over time, and that's only natural. It's a fast-paced industry, things are moving, and so the price that I quoted for electricity today might be completely different to tomorrow, but it's a rough guide. We hope you've enjoyed this video. If you have, please make sure to subscribe and leave us some feedback in the comments. We thank you so much for watching. And of course, if you would like to search for a new car for sale, more specifically a new electric car for sale, then hit the link up there. We've got over 1,000 trusted dealerships nationwide and they can help you go for a test drive, feel it out, and hopefully buy a new electric or just a new car in general. Thanks for watching.